Hiya, and welcome back to Tennis Ace, the game that teaches us that there is a lot of foreshadowing. I feel like there is a lot of foreshadowing. Anyways, let's just hop right in. Once again, I find myself heading to school earlier than usual. It's really weird for me to think of how difficult it was to even make myself get up and out of the bed in the morning until just a few weeks ago. Really, it boggles my mind how such a small change in attitude can make my entire day that much more tolerable. Yeah, I... Yeah, I think I'm ready. Now that said, on Friday... I'm recording. I have taken precautions, like my face will still be hidden... It'll still be hidden. So, yeah. Of course, it's not like some magical pill that gets rid of all my problems for me, but now that I have something to look forward to, I feel a lot more energized to do things. It's a nice feeling. Picking up my phone, I check, up, check on my conversation with June on my way to my classroom. From what he told me, his parents got really worried about him and forced him to stay home on bed rest for a few days. I could tell he was faking being alright when his body was clearly having trouble handling f the fatigue, but I didn't imagine it was that serious. How he even managed to get it past his parents, I seriously don't know. From what he's told me, his mom seemed to be a real tiger mother the past few days. In both the figurative and quite literal sense of the word. Although to be fair, that's what he gets for pretending to be alright when he isn't. What is he, 12? It's not like he's got something to prove. Either way, at least he's supposed to be coming back to school today. I quickly type a message for him, are you sure you're going to be alright, and press send. I don't know if you'll read it and respond before heading to class, but I can at least try. Since I've been coming to school about 40 minutes early every day, I've been spending my time reading or catching up on my studies a little bit. It doesn't hurt to be diligent every now and again. I doubt it'll last, but it'd be nice if I managed to build the habit of studying up again. Sad that I am only seem to be reaching this conclusion in my senior year when I'm about to not need studies anymore. Heading into the building, I go up the stairs towards my classroom, dodging a few students passing by here and there. School is definitely a lot busier this early in the day than I would have imagined. I guess it's to be expected, though, since this is sort of a rigorous private school after all. When I reach the, my floor, I find two familiar figures chatting excitedly in the front of a classroom. Good morning, Keikun. Fancy meeting you here in our floor. Oh, Yuichi-san. Good morning. Whoa, Yuichi-kun, is it really you? How come you're here so early? I've been coming to school early for a while now. You don't need to act so surprised. Really? I had no idea. The two of you don't share a classroom, so it doesn't surprise me. I still have a hard time believing that Saiyachan of all people gets to school early. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? Exactly what I said. You know, you might joke around about it, but M mizuguchi san is actually a model student. Yeah, that's right. I don't laze around all day or find excuses to skip class or anything like that. I actually engage during class, ask questions, take notes and all that stuff. What a sad little life you must lead. What? Iwichi-san, that was a little mean. What? It was a joke. I obviously don't mean it. Your idea of humor never ceases to amaze and astound me. Hey, hey. Is it alright if I beat him up, right? No, 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 no. What did I say about beating up people before 8 a.m.? But... No buts. You promised me. Aww. First of all, what the hell kind of rule is that? And what's with such an arbitrary number? D does this mean I'm safe? For now. Thank God. I really didn't think making one small joke would get me physically assaulted. You seem to lose all sense of self-preservation if it's for the sake of making a joke at someone else's expense, Yuichi-san. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. Ugh, I'd completely forgotten about what June and our other classmates had said to me about that, too. Man, why is it so hard to not make fun of people? By the way, Yuichi-kun, aren't you forgetting anything? Hmm? You certainly bounced back really fast. No, seriously, aren't you forgetting anything? Uh-huh, not that I'm aware of, at least. Are you serious? I know you're an airhead, but this is a bit much, don't you think? Boy, I sure wish I at least knew what the hell I'm getting chewed out for over this time. It's alright, Mizuguchi-san. I didn't expect him to remember it in the first place. Uh-huh! Seriously, what the hell am I apparently forgetting here? Birthday. Birthday? 
It's Kun's birthday. Wish him a happy one already, won't you? Uh oh! Happy birthday, Kun! Shit, shit, shit! How could I have forgotten something like that? Sai even made a big deal out of it last year and everything. It was right around the time KK began hanging out with us too, and she wanted him to feel included. It's fine, really. Like I said, I didn't expect you to remember in the first place, and it's not a big deal, or, and it's not like it's a big deal or anything. Don't just give him a pass so easily. He needs to learn that it's not okay to forget important events like this all the time. He already forgot Shoichi's tournament a few weeks ago, too. Hmm, I suppose that's true. S sorry, I swear it's not on purpose. Hang on, I'm taking this jacket off. Ah! That's it. I'm going to start writing these down on a scheduling app on my phone, and I'll have to, and I'll have it beep at me insistently so I remember shit. Incessantly. So I remember stuff. We were actually discussing some plans. Mizuguchi-san wanted us to get together as a group to celebrate. My family never m makes a big deal out about these things anyway, so I'll be free over the weekend. Th the weekend? Yeah. I was thinking of everyone going out together to eat and celebrate on Sunday. Hmm. I was planning on going out with going out with June on Sunday since he said he's feeling better, but I guess I could talk to him about scheduling for tomorrow instead. I already forgot about the date. If I start making a fuss about when they went to celebrate, I'll officially have crossed the line into crappy friend territory. Y yeah, that sounds great! You can count me in! Iwichi-san, the look on your face isn't really telling. So, so, have you guys talked to everyone else? Oh, I know! Shoichi's probably here already. Maybe we should go invite him. You do know being fake excited isn't going to make us forget about how you forgot the date, right? Won't someone just give me a break already? Seriously, I repent for my sins. Please stop rubbing them on my face. Sins? Aren't you being a tad overdramatic? Do you even realize who you're talking to? Why do I get the feeling that people always expect the worst out of me at all times? But to answer your crappy attempt at deflecting, no, we haven't talked to anyone else about it. I mean, we were only just discussing the possibility just now. Nothing is set in stone yet, so of course we wouldn't have invited anyone else. We needed to know if the date worked out for the two of us before even going out to ask if it works for the rest of you guys. Aw, that's actually really considerate of you two. I'm impressed. Impressed? What the hell did you, did you expect from the two of us that you're so impressed by so little? About as much as you guys expect from me, I'd say. Besides, we also needed to get a firmer grasp on what we were planning to do. Can't just invite a bunch of people out and say, let's do whatever. Sure you can. That's usually how the best hangouts start. And? Any solid plans outside of grab a bite to eat and do stuff? We said celebrate, not do stuff. Don't make it sound more vague than it already is. It's about the same to me, but fair enough. To be perfectly honest, I was kind of drawing a blank on what kind of activities we could do myself. What he means by that is he refuses to tell me what he wants to do because he doesn't want us to go through the trouble. Did you really need to do air quotes for that? Saya raises her hand in the air and does it again, smiling cheekily. Yes. Good grief. Guys, you're kind of losing focus here. Right. If you were to ask me what I would want to do, then I'd prefer to have you guys come over to my place we could have an intimate gathering, just the five of us. Boo! Boring! No, we're not doing a chord progression stream tonight. Star and Sam are exhausted. They are very tired. This is supposed to be my birthday, you know. Shouldn't I be getting a say in this? Zayachan's right, Kaykun. You're turning 18. That's a once-in-a-lifetime event. You've got to celebrate a little more. Oh, sure, because every other birthday year happens multiple times. Just yesterday, I happened to turn 17 for the eighth time. Exactly! No, wait! You're not supposed to be agreeing with me here! Oh, come on, k -kun, live a little! We should all go play laser tag or something, or paintball! I'm a mean shot at paintball! Mmm, bruises as a birthday present? I think I'll pass. You know, you're my friend and I love you, but sometimes you could stand to be a little less... You. What's that supposed to mean? Come on, guys. This sort of thing shouldn't be that hard to figure out. This coming from you, of all people. What? 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 What was that supposed to mean? Just pointing out the irony that the one person who never makes up his mind about anything is one telling us it shouldn't be that hard when it comes to making a decision. Hey! What are you complaining about? She's got you there. That's... I'm not that bad. I just have trouble making up my mind when it comes to what food to order. And what places to go to while making plans. And whether I like June or not. I'm terrible, aren't I? Well, moving on. You're just brushing it off? If you guys are that opposed to staying in, we could all try going to the movies together. That's not exactly a group activity. More like sitting around in silence for a few hours. Then I don't know what to suggest. You guys don't like anything I suggest. Sorry, it's not like we're trying to be difficult. We just want to make sure that it's something really special. 
Maybe we could try asking the others. We don't need to decide exactly what will be done before even letting everyone know. We can brainstorm together. Y yeah! I feel like that might work. Might be for the best. Feels like we're not getting anywhere like this. I can talk to June about it when he arrives. Oh, does that mean he's coming back to class today? Sam. Yeah? Did you watch the uh, video that Amethyst sent you on Twitter? I have not. I haven't checked my Twitter all day. <laughs> yep, we've been messaging every day and he's kept me updated about it. Ex every day, huh? Hmm? Yeah, what about it? It's nothing, don't worry about it. You're mincing words now? Who are you and what did you do with Tasaya? I'm still not 100% clear on what happened. You didn't get to see him on Monday. He was walking around looking really sickly and zombie-like. It was scary. Yeah, you've told me that much already. It's just that since I didn't have a get a chance to see it, I have a hard time seeing it as being that important of a thing. I mean, everything was already solved by the time I was told. I didn't get to see him looking sick, and no one was worried about the whole thing anymore since he was already fine. It's hard to gauge severity from that. Fair enough. It was really concerning, yeah. You definitely were the most worried, for sure. You're probably not wrong there. Somehow I feel like I'm always the last to know about things. You're the one who insists on not being allowed to have lunch with us. If you stopped being so stuck up, it wouldn't be a concern. What? Junior shouldn't go into senior classrooms. Every once in a while due to extra... Extraordinary circumstances, it's fine, but I can't do that on the regular. And that's exactly why she called you stuck up. Are you guys going to give me a hard time even on my birthday? It wouldn't be us if we didn't. Yeah, that's what it means to have friends. Aren't I so blessed? What, would you prefer we leave you alone? Are my only alternatives here to be bullied or to be left alone? Yep. That's a crap hand to be dealt and you know it. Sai and I both laugh, giving Kaikun a few encouraging pats on the back. Let's not dwell on that, then. Is there anything else we can plan out before talking to everyone? I doubt it. We still need to agree on a time of day so we can base our decision on what to do on that. Then we need to decide where we'll eat, whether we'll eat out or at home. We need to decide how long we'll be out so we can work around any possible curfews. Hmm, we may also need to check availability if we decide to go out somewhere. If we're going anywhere that requires tickets, these should be purchased as soon as possible to make sure they don't run out. Oh, and hey, hey, slow down there for a sec for a bit. You're getting way ahead of yourself. Yeah, let's take it one step at a time, shall we? Right, right, sorry. I got carried away. That's all right. We still have some time. There's no need to get ahead of ourselves. Well, we don't actually have that much time. If you wanted to plan something out for the celebration, then you probably should have thought of that the before the day of his birthday. I don't want to hear that from the person who can't even remember the date. Yeah. Yeah, that is true friendship. Like, Star, do you agree? What? True friendship is endless bullying and friendly threats of violence. Absolutely. Yeah. What? Keisuke chuckles, covering his mouth in an attempt to contain himself. Keikun, don't laugh. I'm sorry, it's just your face right now was... The hair's shoulder qu shoulders quiver, his words being cut off frequently by contained laughter. Yuichi-san, you've got to be a little more self-aware. Don't criticize people for things that you do even worse than them. Aren't you just being defensive because you also forgot to make plans before the day? Well, well it's not like I forgot. I just didn't think of organizing a celebration until I asked Keikun what his plans were for spending his birthday. Oh, I guess that makes sense. Now that I think about it, what are your plans for today? Father wants to throw some kind of grandiose gala for most of his business partners and friends. I'll be expected to attend. Hey, that sounds good, though. They're going to be showing me off like I'm some kind of product. Look, my son Keisuke is now an adult. Soon he'll inherit the company in my place. Some crap like that. Uh oh That sounds less good. You stepped right on that landmine. I saw it coming from a mile away. Then couldn't you have warned me that I was about to say something really dumb instead of watching in silence? It's... Fine. It'll be a painfully tedious and uncomfortable evening, but at least it won't last too long. My condolences. Nobody's dying. Maybe, but I don't know what else to say. I mean, what do you say to something like this? Is there any chance you could sneak out? Not without royally pissing off my family, which I'll admit is a very tempting idea. You have no sense of self-preservation whatsoever? Stop doing things you know will land you in trouble. Which is why I decided we needed someplace special to celebrate. Something fun that he'll actually enjoy. Is that why you two basically shot down all my ideas? But when you put it that way, it almost makes us sound bad. I'm pretty sure that was the intention, Saya-chan. I, I promise we'll work hard to find something you'll enjoy. I promise. You just said I promise twice. Heh, <laughs> I'll hold you to that. Either way, I do appreciate the sentiment. People don't usually care much about what I want, so it does feel really nice. Well, of course we care. You're our friend. 
Yeah, for sure. Plus, I can't wait to smash your face into the cake. That too! Hold on a second. I feel like I just heard something really dangerous. Don't worry about it. Telling me not to worry about it just makes me worry even more. It'll be fine! Someone, anyone, stop these two! Yo. Hey, uh, it's Amethyst there. Yeah. Amethyst, they just followed you back on Twitter. Okay, that was it. I'm going over my notes for this class before the bell rings. I spent the past 30 minutes or so doing that and trying to reorganize everything. The few notes that I do have are all jumbled and hard to read. Studying through these would require way too much time deciphering for them to be of any use. Genkun was kind enough to lend me his notebook so I could cross-reference his notes with mine and come up with a better method to organize them. I had thought of asking for class reps notes instead since hers are so well summarized and easy to understand, but I wouldn't be able to stand the teasing that would come along with them. It just wouldn't be worth it. And I don't want to have to... And I don't want to co just copy Gins like it's no problem either because that, that, be, that because that feels like cheating. Plus, forcing myself to think a little bit is bound to help me retain the material a little better. And if I'm doing better with my own studies, that means I'll be able to help Juden a lot more with his. After what I saw of his panic during midterms and just what kind of toll the stress took on him, I definitely want to do my best to help him, even if it's just a little bit. So right now I'm focusing on making my notes as condensed and easy to read as possible. I'm vaguely aware of the sound of the door being opened behind me. But don't bother looking up for my notebook. Yuichi-san, you're here early. As a sweet familiar voice I hadn't heard in a few days calls out my name, I finally look up, being greeted by June's face. Good morning to you too. How are you feeling? A ton better, thanks for asking. What about you though? What are you up to? I've been working on restructuring my notes so they're easier to study from. See? They're color-coded and everything. Wow! They look a lot better than mine! Y yeah, I guess they do. I've seen your notebooks when we were studying together before, so I'm not surprised. Saying your notes would be a mess or a mess would be charitable. And an insult to messes. But why are you going through all this trouble? I thought you hated studying. It's certainly not my first choice on how to spend my time that much is for sure. June cocks his head to the side, giving me the same kind of quizzical look that a baby might use. I can just about imagine the question marks popping up above his head. This way I'll have an easier time tutoring you when we study together. June's eyes fly open and the tiger takes a step back, nearly bumping on the table behind me. You, you're going through all of this trouble because of me? Well, sort of. Sort of? I've also been feeling a little bit restless lately, like I could be doing more. I don't know if I like the idea of you inconveniencing yourself for my sake. Tch! If I'm doing something, I'm doing it out of my own free will. You don't have to constantly obsess over whether or not you're inconveniencing me. In fact, if you keep that up, I'm going to literally slap some sense into you. Why do you always end up threatening to slap me? It's how I show care. Find less violent ways to do that! I smile, reaching up with my hand and putting it on top of the tiger's head. June immediately freezes, his eyes wide open. He says thanks. Sam. What? Amethyst says thanks. Oh, awesome. His eyes wide open. You worry too much. Fine. I guess I won't say anything about it this time. June takes a step back away from me, his face tinged a light red and his complaints fully disarmed. Good, because I wasn't going to stop even if you told me to. Who are you and what did you do to the real Yuichi-san? Mm, I wonder. Uh-huh. Maybe I am an alien shapeshifter that has taken the place of the one you call Yuichi. Th that's not funny! I disagree wholeheartedly. By the way, there was something I needed to run by you. Oh, what is it? Just like that, Tiger's attention is whisked away to a different topic and he goes back to talking normally, pulling up his chair and sitting by his desk. So, since you said it yourself that you were doing better, I was wondering if it would be alright for us to schedule our outing. Our a- uh, Oh! It takes him a second for realization to sink in, but when it does, his face goes back to shining bright red. You probably don't know this, but today's Kun's birthday and Saiyachan was looking to schedule a celebration for him on Sunday, with all of us together. No, I already knew about that. Well, I know about the birthday. The celebration is news to me. Uh-huh. How did you know about his birthday? Even I forgot. Because I asked him, it's not exactly hard to show an interest in your friends. Oof. No matter how many times it happens, I don't think I will ever get used to these sudden cutting words coming from... Cutting words coming from June. Some Someone like June. I sent Case a text wishing him a happy birthday this morning and everything. I've gotten him a present, but I didn't know what to get. I mean, what do you get for someone who can literally buy anything they want? Kaykun isn't like that. I'm sure you would have been happy with whatever you got him. You say that, but it's hard not to worry considering just how different our positions are. I spent the past few days... He's... He's locked at home trying to think of something, but I've got nothing. 
Well, well, aren't you an earnest one? You really are a good guy, Jun-kun. I guess. And also surprisingly coy when it comes to being praised. Either way, going back to the initial matter at hand, is it alright for you if we go out together tomorrow so we'll have Sunday free to spend with the others? Y yeah, that's fine by me. <laughs> I have to admit that Jun is very cute when he's acting embarrassed like this. Alright, we should all be set. Now all that's left is getting together with everyone else during lunch to decide on our plans for Sunday. You guys don't know what we're going to do yet? I thought it was already set from the way you talked about it. Alright, favorite candy. The Starburst Jelly Beans. That is my favorite candy. Like, like, I, I like those. I like the uh, Starburst Jelly Beans. I don't like the way it makes my teeth feel, but I like the taste. I just like jelly beans. Hang on, I'm, I'm, I'm opening up a drink. Alrighty, got a drink. Well, let's just say that between Saya, Keisuke, and I, we had trouble coming up with ideas that would fit the bill. Alright, Sam, favorite candy. He said. He says. He says Heath Bars. Star. Favorite candy. Candy? Yeah. She says push pop. Wait, no. Hold on. Can I change my answer again? Yeah, you can change your answer. Gummy bears. Gummy bears is a good one. Sam says gummy bears. Ooh. Anytime I go to sheep. Gummy bears. Oh, I remember as a kid. Let's go to sheep and get gummy bears and a... Gummy bears and like a little... Oh my god, juice. cow tails. I remember those. Do you all remember bug juice? I do remember... Oh, Bug no, juice was the shit. Specifically the, the blue, blue one. one. Mm. Yeah! Bro, Bug juice was the shit. Yo, they still sell them. I know. I don't want a Bug juice now. I think, I, I think, I think they're, Gilmore. I think they're at Shop and Save. If they're not at Gilmore, they might be at Shop. They're, they're, they're only like, Shop and Save's only like a mile away. We could literally just walk there. We could just walk to Shop and Save. What do we, time do they close? I uh, think they close at 9. Uh, do we want to go by tomorrow? Yeah. Alright, just uh, send send me... Just like tell me a good time tomorrow. Alright. We were hoping we'd have more luck by getting together all five of us and shooting some ideas. Hmm, if it's something that Keisuke would like, then... What about us? What about something music related? Like karaoke? Ah, cow tails. Ah, do you remember cow tails? Ah, my grandma. She would like, she would like get them like Ooh. all the time. Butterscotch. She'd be, that, oh, butterscotch is my favorite grandma candy. Butterscotch I used to discs. Keep, uh, butterscotch and peppermints in my bag in case of panic attacks during school. My dad uh, and, went. All of the kids used to like, well, during high school, all of the like, uh, like football players and basketball players during gym class would come up to me for the peppermint. For whatever reason, I'm the peppermint girl, apparently. My dad crashed his, not crashed, but he hit something with his truck one time, so we had to have it in the shop to get it fixed. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, while he was getting it fixed, uh, he had like this random grandma car and it had three butterscotch in it when we got it and I ate all three of them. Uh, I'm, I'm going with Like karaoke? That's an idea. It's a pretty safe bet. I guess we can pitch that one to the group. Oh, or maybe we could go to an escape room. An escape room? June's growing excitement quickly begins to show as he starts gesturing with his hands more and more while speaking. Yeah, I saw something about them in a TV show. It's a group activity where we get locked inside of a theme room and have to solve puzzles to reach the exit before time runs out. It seemed like it'd be a lot of fun. Is that even a thing that exists in Japan? I've never seen any around town. There might be a few small independent ones hidden around somewhere in town. 
But I do know that when I looked it up, I found out the whole chain of them in Tokyo and Kanagawa. I don't know if going all the way to Tokyo for something like that would be very feasible. It's almost an hour by train for a one-way trip, not to mention trying to find our way around an unknown location would be a nightmare. But I know that if I mention any of these things, he just stubbornly insists that it'll be fine or it could be so much fun. So instead I'll go with, you do know the population in Tokyo is over 10 times larger than over here in Saitama, right? Uh-huh! So just imagine how big the crowds would be. Do you think you could handle that? Never mind! Forget I said anything! Success! I do almost feel bad for using his weakness against him like that. He's definitely getting a lot better at handling crowds of people, but Tokyo would realistically fry his brain no matter how I look at it. So really, I'm doing this for his own good. Yep, totally not for any selfish reasons at all. Thinking of fun things we could do together is harder than I thought. Now you understand our pain. What about the two of us? What are we going to be doing together for tomorrow? Oh ho ho, seems like someone's curious. Maybe just a little. But that won't do, June Coon. Don't you know that curiosity killed the cat? I I'm not a cat. Not exactly, at least. Oh, so you're saying you'd rather miss out on the surprise? I never knew you were the type to go asking for spoilers. N no, I don't like spoilers. Right? So wouldn't it be better for it to be kept a secret? After all, I spent all week coming up with a fun plan for us. R really? Yes, yes, of course I did. Do you really think I wouldn't come prepared? You've been looking so forward to this, I wouldn't want to disappoint you. Th that sounds really nice. Th thank you, Yuichi-san. <laughs> Taming the tiger has been a lot more fun than I thought it would be. Not to mention how easy it is to get worked up. So how about we go back to thinking of fun things we could do for Keikun's birthday, huh? Yeah! Almost as if sneering at our efforts to be productive. The bell cruelly rings, announcing the start of the day's classes. Uh, oh, guess we'll have to leave it for lunchtime after all. We tried, that's all that matters. Students shift back to their desks, getting themselves ready for the arrival of the teacher. I quickly walk up to Ginkun, returning his notebook to him before I too get back to my own desk. A few hours later... The bell rings, bringing an end to the last period before lunchtime. Ah, what a shame. We were just getting to the good part. Well, it is what it is. Everyone, do you remember that test results we posted on the notice board at the end of the school day? What? The test results are made public in here? Yeah. How do you think they keep track of student rankings? They're student rankings? What the hell kind of school did you go to before this? No, there's no way you can convince me that this is normal. Absolutely not happening. I hope you all have a nice weekend. Don't let your grades bum you out too much. Why are you saying something so ominous right now? Shima-sensei quickly collects his books, placing them under his arm and walking out of the classroom with a smile on his face. The guy might be an enthusiastic teacher, but he's definitely a few screws short of a hardware store. I turn around in my chair, facing the tiger that has now slumped over his seat, frowning and whimpering. You okay there, buddy? I can't believe they announced test results publicly here. Why would they even do that? I've never been to any school where they didn't. Is it that really so unusual for you? I've never been to a score they did! Now I'll just feel embarrassed if my results are really bad! Come on, you can't have done that bad. You were doing pretty well while we were studying together. I'm sure you'll have at least managed to hit the passing grade. Do you really think so? Of course! You put a lot of effort in it, and if there's one thing I know that'll never betray you, it's effort. That sounds like a line from a bad self-help book. Hey, that one is 100% an original. Don't be ungrateful! I promise you'll have done okay. Don't freak out before anything even happens. I'll try. I just have a hard time not thinking of the worst case scenarios. I reach forward on my seat, placing a hand on top of June's head and quickly running my fingers through his fur in an attempt to be comforting. You're alright. And if it turns out that you need a little bit more help with your studies, then, well, that's what I'm here for. Yuichi-san! Feel better? Yes! Osu! Osu! Oh, Saya-chan, you're full of energy today. You bet I am! It's finally Friday! The two arrive together, as is your already usual for them, pulling up chairs and sitting down. At least we'll finally get the test results today. Yes, hello to you too, by the way. Uh, oh, sorry! I was a little bit distracted and forgot. Where are my manners? Good morning! Morning! Manners? You have those? Don't make me pull on your ear. Boo! No sense of humor. Shit. I'm a bit too worried about the test results to focus on being humorous. You'll have to forgive me for that. Is that why you've been a sourpuss all week? Yuichi-san! Jun sputters out my name with a shocked tone of voice. 
What? I'm not a sourpuss. I just had that concern on my the back of my mind is all. And you shouldn't go around calling people that in the first place, even if they're your friends. Alright, alright, I'm sorry. Sheesh, tough crowd. By the way, are you feeling better now, Kobayashi? We were all worried about the lack of updates. Huh? Oh yeah! Yeah, I'm all better now. That's good. Yeah. Now we just have to wait for Keikun to arrive so we can all start planning. Mastru, it's supposed to be the guest of honor after all. Did you already bring Shoichi into the loop? Yup, I passed by his class for a little bit to let him know before the bell rang this morning. I tried to think of some stuff we could do, but I was drawing serious blanks. As were we all. I guess we could just think of stuff we usually do when we're all together and go from that. Boo! No, we need to do something special. If it's something we do all the time, then it's not special. You say that, but the birthday boy himself doesn't seem to find it all that special. He's just a sourpuss. June chokes on his food, coughing and gently thumping his stomach. Hey, how come you're allowed to call people that and I'm not? What's the difference? The difference is he's not here, so he can't be offended by it. That's the line? Morning. Speak of the devil. Favorite dog breed. Pitbull. I fucking love pitbulls. Sam, if, if you're a dog person. Sam says Husky, Star says Golden Retriever. Also German, German, German Shepherd, Shepherd Husky Mix. Yes. But also Pitbulls are just the greatest of breeds. I'm sticking with Pitbulls. Kitties are also really cute. I fucking love Pitbulls. Like, I, I have a Pitbull at home. And he is the best boy. Speak of the devil. What? Were you guys talking about me? Keikun shows up with this ever impeccable sense of timing, looking between the four of us with a frown. Y yeah, we were trying to come up with some ideas just now. Yep, that's what it was. Oh, why do you sound so suspicious? Um, you worry too much. Just pull a chair and sit down. Ah, right. My bad. Keisuke does as he's instructed, with Shoichi scooting his chair a little to the side to give the hair a little more space. Man, I didn't realize just how unusual it is for the five of us to get together like this at lunchtime. You all eat in the classroom, so it's not like I have a chance to join. You could just stop being so concerned about appearances and come over every day. You just choose not to. What? No, that'd be bad. Uh-huh. Why exactly? Because it'd just be bad, okay? Lay off. Are you two really going to start fighting already? Who says we're fighting? Sounds about par for the course, actually. Oh, I almost forgot. Happy birthday, Rushihara. Aw, thank you. You're only wishing him a happy birthday now? Ha! I knew I wasn't the only one who'd forgotten! No, I just didn't get the chance to see him face to face until now, and I felt like a text would be too impersonal for that. It is! In that case, happy birthday, Keisuke san! You don't have to worry about that, Kobayashi san. I already appreciated the sentiment the first time. Really? I'm so glad! Now you're all just making me look bad. No, we're not. It's not like you need any help for that in the first place. That's just cruel! Shoichi pulls his bag and starts rummaging inside of it, looking for something. You brought your bag over? How come? I have my reasons. Here. Shoichi pulls out a small package neatly wrapped in purple and silver striped gift wrap, handing it over to Keikun. What? A present? No, it's dirty laundry. Of course it's a present! It's your birthday! You didn't have to. I know. I wanted to anyway. Especially considering that since we weren't friends yet last year when you had your birthday, I really wanted to give you something to make up for it. Thank you. Aw, you're so thoughtful, Shokun. No, this really should just be expected. Oh man, I knew I should have gotten him a present after all. You're alright, Kobayashi-kun. It's not necessary. Go on, open it. Uh-huh, now? Is there any reason why you shouldn't? I, I suppose there isn't. Keikun undoes the bow tying the bag closed. He pulls out a box with some kind of fancy-looking earbuds plastered on the front, his eyes going wide as soon as he sees it. Are these? You could probably afford even better ones yourself, but I still thought it'd be nice to get you these. Wait, wait, wait! These aren't some of the best consumer ones in the market! They're audiophile-grade earbuds! You know about these, June? Of course! I'm a musician too, you know! I also love listening to music and I've had my eyes on this model for a while now. I've been saving up for a while. Oh, damn. I didn't know that. Now I'm wondering just how much these must have cost. I, I don't know what to say. By the way, the manufacturer lets you special order and customize ones on their website, so... You didn't. 
I did. Kakun rapidly opens the package, pulling out a neat leather box from inside, probably where the earbuds are stored. I knew purple's your favorite color, so... Thank you. You don't really have to say anything. It's not a big deal anyway. Happy birthday. No, oh, I feel like I'm going to cry, you guys. Please don't. You're such an ugly crier. That's mean. It's the truth. Why did you have to ruin such a tender atmosphere with unnecessary words? Oh, shut up. You're the one being super loud and extra. Shoichi got KSK the everyday E25 from Raycons. That's what I'm saying. I am the Raycon unofficial spokesman. If you give me the time, I will do like a whole Raycon deal. That's also mean. And it's also the truth. Hey, Earth to Kun, you still there? I reach forward on the table, snapping my fingers a few times in front of the hare's face until he finally notices it. Oh, I'm sorry, did you say something? Were you not just listening to every, to, were you not listening to anything we just said? S sorry, I spaced out for a little bit. It's all right. I'd have spaced out too if I were in your shoes. That's not really saying anything, June. Well, now that that's done, should we get back to the thing we needed to discuss? Do talk about it while we're having lunch, or should we eat first? I mean, June's already eating. Well, wait, I wasn't supposed to. Once again, you're fine, Kobayashi-kun. Yeah, you worry too much. Oh, okay. I don't know, it just feels a little bit rude to start digging into food without asking first when we're supposed to be discussing something. Uh, I'm sorry! Cut it out! Why are you picking on June of all people? Yeah, you were being so nice up until now. Huh? How am I picking on him? I was just making an observation. Are you alright, Irata? That really is a little out of character for you. He's been like this all week. Really? Is something the matter? I'm fine. You don't need to worry about me. Are you sure? We can talk about it if there's something bothering you. You don't have to be extra nice to me just because you feel like you owe me something. That's not why we're here, anyway. How about we just get back to the matter at hand and forget about this? That's not why I... Fine. I'll let it be. For now. I don't like the sound of that. Good. That's the intention. Well then, so... Any ideas? Couldn't we all just go to a movie or something? I've already suggested that. They shot me down. Because going to a movie isn't really enjoying ourselves in a group activity. It's just sitting in a dark room for a couple of hours without speaking to each other. That's a really weird objection to have. I think watching a movie could be nice. We could go out for dinner together after. It doesn't have to be fancy. But, but, it has to be special! I think you're worrying too much. She'll be fine so long as the five of us are together. I agree. That's all I want for my birthday, really. I'm already going to have to deal with my family's gaudy celebration today. I just want something low-key that I can actually enjoy. We could go out for karaoke after. I remember you really enjoyed the last time we did Heisuke-san. That could work, yeah. And here I was worrying all this time about wanting to make it extra special. I appreciate the sentiment, Mizuguchi-san. I really do. But my entire life is already over the top. Well, everything. I want to kick back and relax a little. Jeez, fine. If you put it that way, then I can't argue about it. Oh, I'm sure you can. It's just better if you don't. What's that supposed to mean? Hmm, I wonder. Kakun places a hand on his mouth, trying to cover up his laughter. His shoulders shaking up and down at the sound. Don't laugh! Poor Sayachan. Poor Mizuguchi-san. Poor Sa- Stop repeating after each other! Sai thrashes and rages on her seat, whimpering and groaning along with the assortment of other sounds I can't really describe. Does this mean we're all in agreement over our plans for Sunday? Yeah! Sounds good to me, yeah. Me too. The four of us turned to look on Saya-chan once, she, on Saya once she settled down on her seat, expecting an answer from her. What about you, Saya-chan? She squirms and fidgets, avoiding our eyes and biting her lip. Ugh, peer pressure. Fine. I guess we can go with that plan. The great evil has been vanquished. The land has been saved. Who are you calling a great evil? Despite minor setbacks, the mood continues to improve at our table until eventually all of us are laughing and chatting excitedly together. Almost like things haven't been weird and awkward at all for the past few weeks. Feels really good to be back to normality again. Normality. A few hours later. Ah! Finally! Classes are finally done for the day! It felt like it would never end! God, when you commit yourself to paying attention to everything, time really feels like it chugs along more than usual. And my head hurts from concentrating for so long. I'm really not used to doing doing this anymore. It's finally over. 
At least there's someone else that shares my sentiment right here. You doing all right there? Yeah, I'm just tired. I'll bet. You just got back after being ill, too. Yeah. Do let me know if you're feeling weak or sick again. I'm fine. You really have to stop worrying so much. It's annoying. I'm sorry for caring. And how can you even say something like that with a smile on your face? I'm going to head for the music room now and practice a bit. I haven't been allowed to touch a piano all week. I'm re feeling really antsy by now. Yeah, I can definitely imagine. Just make sure you don't overexert yourself, okay? What did I just say about worrying too much? Am I not even allowed this? All right, all right, I'll stop commenting on it. Sheesh, you don't have to look at me like that. <laughs> you don't just get to laugh it off either. I should get going, though. I'm really raring to play right now. Okay, I'll come over to pick you up tomorrow for a little thing, all right? Y yeah! Wait, when were we supposed to meet again? Seriously? Oh, June. 2 p.m. I texted you about it and everything. Hey, yeah, that's true. How can you forget something like that? It's written down for you. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow, Yuichi san. Good luck on your practice today. Same goes to you. Enjoy playing the piano again. I will. Well, I suppose there's nothing for me to do other than prepare myself for tomorrow. For good or for bad, that's the deadline I set for myself to come to a decision. But for now, I have to practice. I can't believe I'm about to say this, but I'm really looking forward to tomorrow. I have a really good feeling about it. I f keep feeling like that is foreshadowing. The smell of sautéed onions tickles my nose while I stir the skillet, slowly drizzling in some sauce. I was going just a little bit insane this morning, watching the clock tick and waiting for the appropriate time for me to leave the house. It got to a point that was so unbearable I just had to find something else to do to distract me before I went insane. So I got started on lunch about an hour early and decided to meal prep enough for a few days. At least Aki and I will have food to take to school on Monday. Are you sure you're feeling okay? Aki had been probing me with questions since I got started, telling me just how weird I was acting and yada yada yada. Can someone start making lunch at 9 a.m. without getting the third degree? Sheesh. For what feels like the fifth time, yes! I'm okay. That was only the third time I asked, though. Why are you even asking me the same question three times in a row? Why have you been cooking while sighing every couple of seconds? What? I haven't been sighing. Mm-hmm. And I'm the Queen of England. Aki has so much sass. There is so much sass. R.I.P. Queen Elizabeth. Have I been sighing? I didn't notice that, but... You've also been tapping your foot a lot. You usually only do that when you're feeling antsy. Just how close of an eye do you keep on me? I've got to get my blackmail material from somewhere. Yeesh, that sounded incredibly ominous. I swear, I just felt my skin crawl. Are you really that nervous about going out to meet Jun-san? I'm fine. Will you stop friggin' asking me questions already? Sure. By the way, though, Mr. Fine. What? Your sauce is burning. Oh, oh shit. Hot, hot, hot. I quickly poured down the water that I'd forgotten to in an attempt to save up, immediately creating a wave of steam that rose up to hit my nose, hurting my eyes. What I was left with was a pile of burnt onions and soy sauce stuck to the skillet. Good job. Shut up. Just go get a trash bag. At least it was just some onions. Those were the last ones we had in the fridge. I need... I'd need to go out to buy more. And just cook without the onions. Guess I'll have to. Sorry I burned them. Why are you apologizing to me? I don't know. I guess it's true that sassy little runts don't deserve any apologies. Thank god I started this early. At least I have time to fix this. Can you wash the skillet for me while I work on prepping some other stuff? Sure. Aku quickly hops down from his seat by the counter, grabbing the hot skillet and running it under some warm soapy water. I get to work on roughly chopping some vegetables so I can roast them along with the salmon I'm preparing. Don't have to make this much food, you know. Why do you even need that sauce for? I was supposed to use it to brush the salmon before serving. Have you ever realized that the more stressed you are, the more complicated the meals you cook get? Yes. Cooking is one of the few things I enjoy doing to relax. It gives me a break. 
Besides, I've never seen you complain about me going out of my way to cook something extra fancy. I guess I could substitute the onions for some minced garlic. I need to add a little sugar to get that sweetness that usually come from the onions, though. You're basically speaking Greek to me. You could always learn to cook, too. I'd be willing to teach you. Pass. You're going to need to learn how to do it eventually, you know. Nah, I'll just order out. I really hope you end up getting a job that makes a lot of money, then, because that sounds unsustainable. By the way, what are you two going to be doing today, anyway? I'm taking June to the theater. There's a local orchestra playing tonight. Apparently, they're pretty good for an unknown group. Hmm, that sounds like the sort of thing he'd like. Right? It starts at 5 p.m., so I was thinking of, of us going around town for a little bit and killing time together. He really likes sweets, so I was thinking of taking him to a bakery. Wow. Thought of it all based on things he likes, huh? Well, yeah, that's what you usually do on a day as special as this! Aki's eyebrow twitches, the smile vanishing from his face completely. Oh, and how come today is such a special day? Well, well, we're celebrating both of us doing well in assess, after all. Can you believe the Cleveland's lowest grades would in 82? I sure can't. Uh-huh. How come you're not going out with the others, too? I'm sure they also do really well. Well, well, you know, Jun was the only one running risk of failing, so it makes sense that I'm treating him. You're allowed to call this a date, you know. I already told you that I'm cool with you two being a thing before. Does not compute! <laughs> the adjustment is still out on that one! You mean still isn't? Something to that effect, yeah! Alright then, you can tell me officially when you're ready. Just make sure you don't end up hurting June Sana, right? I'm not taking relationship advice from a 12-year-old! Thank you. You're welcome. Here, I finished washing your pan. Appreciate it. I think like my brain is slowly turning to mush. Aki, why do you have to do this to me of all today of all days? Ah, uh, it's finally here. I'm standing in front of June's house, feeling way too nervous to knock on the door. Tried leaning my back against the wall for a second while it gathered my nerve, but ended up nearly burning myself. God damn it, Summer, why do you have to arrive so cruelly every year? The brick on the street feels like a friggin' furnace. Not to mention the asphalt radiating heat everywhere. I feel like I'm cooking alive. I hate this weather. Here we go. After arguing with myself for damn near five whole minutes, I finally knock on the door waiting patiently for an answer. I wonder if June's parents are home. I know there's a chance his dad is out on a shift right now, but I don't know if his mom works weekends. After a minute or two, I finally hear footsteps coming from the other side. Hey there, you son! You're here! A tiger appears on the other side of the open door, stuttering and twitching, probably even more nervous than I am. His head is even tinted red for some reason. Somehow seeing him looking like this helps me relax a tiny little bit. June, thank you. I really owe you one. Hey, I'm here to pick you up. Sorry I'm late. It's alright. It's not like I was waiting anxiously on the other side of the door for you to get here. <laughs> June, you really are an open book. How come it took you so long to open the door if that's the case? I, I said it wasn't the case. Alright then. Hypothetically, if that had been the case, why would you have taken so long to get the door? I might have hypothetically dropped my key behind the shoe cabinet. June. Oh, June. June. Okay, then. Are you ready to go? Do you need to say goodbye to your parents or say anything? Nah, they're both at work right now. It's just me in the house. All right, then. Let's get going. Yeah! The two of us walk together through the neighborhood streets, heading to the all-too-familiar side of the downtown train station. As you get closer and closer to it, the amount of people on the streets increases little by little until we're finally surrounded by more bodies than I can count. Man, it, it really gets busy here on the weekends, huh? Uh, oh, right, I forgot. Are you going to be alright? Yeah, I think so. I've been slowly getting better at dealing with crowds. It's just... My old school didn't have all that many students to begin with, and I was, it was in the smaller town a few hours away from Nagoya, so I never had to deal with them back there. Nagoya? Wait, your old school was in the Chubu region? That's far! Not that far. It could have been worse still. But yeah, I lived away from Kanto for seven years. And Saitama is also a big city on its own, so it's no wonder I'm not used to it anymore. I didn't know any about any of that. How come you never said anything? It's not like it was super relevant at any point. I mean, what difference does it make knowing where my old school was? I, I guess he does have a point in that. I've been slowly getting better acclimated to it, though. I, I mean... I have to do it if I want to move to Germany for my college graduation. Actually, I'll let you mention that. I do have a question about that. Oh, what is it? You've talked a few times about going to school in Germany, but I don't know any specifics. What kind of school is this in the first place? Oh, I guess that's true. There are currently three schools I have my eyes on. Uh, the number one choice, though, is the Cologne University of Music, which is the most prestigious music institution in all of Europe. Whoa, whoa for real? And you can get in there? 
They are very selective. If I didn't have a seven-year hiatus in my piano competitions, and assuming I spent that entire time getting the same level of results as I did before I stopped, my approval would be pretty much certain. But now, even if I manage to fulfill my goal of winning every competition I'm taking part in this year, it'll still be a toss-up. That's why I have two other backup choices in case I don't get in. They are also leading schools in the musical world, but nowhere near as prestigious. I, I really wanted to get into my top choice, though. That's been my dream since I was a kid. Well, wow, I, I can't even imagine. Never really dreamed of college or specialized education myself. My dad taught me about tennis when I was only six. At the time, I found it very fun, but didn't have any lofty goals related to it. After he passed away, though, it felt to me like tennis was the only way I could feel close to him, so I kept going because of the memory pushing me forward. Even though I fell in love with the sport and decided to make it my career, there are still nights when I can't sleep, wondering if this is really my own dream or if I just stole someone else's. And you've never had a doubt about it? Not even once did you think that maybe this isn't what you wanted after all? No, never. I started playing piano when I was three. By the time I turned eight, I had already spent all of my day playing it. It was what I loved to do in the most. I could never imagine a future without it. After all, from the moment I had any awareness of who I was as a person, the piano was the most important thing in my life. Of course, things didn't go quite as I had planned. My goals changed a little bit now that I'm aiming to be a game composer instead of a professional pianist. But my education choice isn't really affected by that. I can't really see any other path for me. I, I don't know what to say. I want to say that I feel the same way for tennis, but it's so weird. I don't know if I can share the same level of conviction over it as he does. I've never really stopped to think about just how driven Jun must be to following a goal like this with all of his heart. It's so weird to see someone that seems so meek and absent-minded and realize that they're actually fighting really hard to make a huge dream come true. Even now, I feel like I'm still misjudging him due to the childish image I have of him in my head. Every time I think that that's changed, I realize it's not yet the case. Sorry. Huh? What for? Just sorry in general. Um, okay? I'm not really sure how to answer that. That's alright, you don't have to say anything. I place a hand on top of June's head, gently petting it and running my fingers through the soft, fluffy fur. Just seeing that peaceful, warm smile on his face makes my heart tighten up. June, I'm so grateful to you, in more ways than you can even imagine. Come on, there's no point in standing around by a street corner. We should head to our first destination already. Yeah! Wait, where are we going again? <laughs> Why were you agreeing so enthusiastically when you have no idea? It just sounded like a very exciting thing when you said it. Never changed, Dune. Huh? How come? I mean, these clothes are going to get sweaty and gross eventually, so I really need to... I didn't mean it like that. Just follow me, you dork. Uh, oh, okay. After about 20 minutes walking through the downtown streets, we finally reached our destination, a small bakery that was recommended to me by Shoichi. This is where we came to get the cake for his dad's welcome party a while ago, though the party itself ended up taking me because the idiot just decided he had to cook. Let him cook. You haven't seen his cooking. This motherfucker, Shoichi, put coffee grounds and sea slug into chicken noodle soup. Yeah. And also a healthy dose of vitamin D. Why would he put vitamins in it? Because he's insane. At least the cake itself was pretty tasty, so I decided this would be a nice spot to come to with June. Oh, cakes! Lots of cakes and pastries! Yep, I know you like sweets, so this was my first stop. Yay! Cakes! Are you even listening to me right now? Here, let's sit on this table right here, and try not to make too much noise. Got it! June obediently follows along with me, pulling up two chairs by a small corner table near the display case. You have to make your order on the counter. Just tell me what you want and I'll get it for you. Strawberry anything! R really? anything yeah you already know i love strawberry more than anything why are you even surprised i don't know when it comes to you i never cease to be surprised i guess what does that mean that you're adorable what don't just drop that on me all of a sudden <laughs> i'll be right back well then let's see what the options they have hi there good afternoon what can i help you with good afternoon what do you guys have that is strawberry flavored we have a few things strawberry shortcake a strawberry and cream tart strawberry eclair candied strawberries the eclairs are our most popular strawberry flavored dessert that sounds good enough for me. Can I have a strawberry eclair for my friend and a lime tart for me? Certainly. <laughs> the clerk grabs a pair of tongs and grabs one of each for my order, putting them in an individual paper plates and placing them on a plastic tray to be carried to, my th to the table. I quickly pay for the bill, granted I do it without June's knowledge, and take our things back to the table. And done. Oh, is that an eclair? It looks really good. 
You couldn't hear us talking at the counter. It's only five or so steps away. Hmm? Sorry, I got a little bit distracted, so I wasn't paying attention. Distracted by what? Right, that makes sense, I guess. Hey, well, hey, June, don't just eat it with your hands. Huh, I can't. Why do you think I placed a fork and knife right next to your plate? Sorry, I didn't notice them. Come on, I know I usually say it's adorable by how easily distracted you are, but even that has limits. We're in public. Don't eat with your hands in public. I can't believe I'm having to teach you that lesson. I know you're not supposed to do that. I just didn't see the silverware, so I thought that was the only choice. Sure, keep telling yourself that, buddy. Oh, the cream inside is strawberry flavored too. Is it good? Yes, it's delicious. <laughs> I'm glad to hear. If it lets me see more of that precious smile, then I'm on board to treat him like this as many times as I can. What about your lime tart, Yuichi-san? Pretty good, yeah. I tend to prefer them slightly more acidic, but this one is still delicious. I can taste the lime in it pretty well. It certainly looks good. I wouldn't trade my eclair for it, though. Nobody's asking to you two, your dork. The two of us laugh at nothing in particular, enjoying our desserts while throwing away trivial conversation. June is so easy to talk to. It sometimes surprises me just how chatty he really is considering how shy he was when we first met. He also shows an interest in pretty much any topic that is brought up as well, so I never feel like I'm racking my brain trying to think of something he might enjoy talking about. If it's anything he knows and likes, he'll contribute heavily to the conversation while gushing about it. If it's something he doesn't know very well or doesn't have a personal interest in, he'll ask questions about it to try and find out more about why I like it. He's a pretty good conversationalist once you get through his sh through that shy exterior, and his bubbly attitude always has a way of lifting my spirits. By the way, I hope I'm not overstepping any boundaries bef here, but I was kind of hoping I could ask you a bit more about your old school. Well, why that of all things? Well, it was apparently a big chunk of your life, but I still feel like I know nothing about it. <laughs> I suppose that's true. There's not much to talk about, though. The student body was pretty small, less than 100 students in total. It was also a boarding school, so I shared a dorm room with another student there. It was really awkward once I started getting older and realizing I was interested in guys. How so? Well, dorms weren't assigned specifically based on age. My roommate was three years older than me, and he was a track runner. Freak deer! Freak deer! Ah. He was also really confident in his body, so he didn't feel a need to go to the bathroom whenever he needed to get changed. It was hard not to look. Oh, damn. I can imagine that situation being quite awkward for him. There were also the communal showers. Those were always bordering on giving me a panic attack just thinking of all the ways I could embarrass myself in them. Other than that, it was a pretty normal school. The class had about 15 or so students at any given time. We had class projects, presentations, papers, tests, those kinds of things. What about friends? You lived and studied there for seven years, right? Surely you must have had some. Not really. What? I have a hard time believing that. You're so sweet and kind and... and... nice! How could you not have any friends? You and Shoichi went through a lot of effort to bring me into your group and make me feel welcome. Can you really imagine a bunch of 11-year-olds doing the same? And I never had the confidence to insert myself into other people's conversations either. I ended up just spending all the time alone, all my time alone playing piano in the music room. You also had a piano room in there? Yeah, it was one of the best parts of the place. They had music lessons as a part of the curriculum to serve as a kind of musical therapy. Musical therapy? For a brief second, I swore I could hear a sound akin to a squeak coming from the tiger as, as his eyes went wide. Yeah, I mean, think about it. You cram a bunch of young kids into a dorm away from their friends and families. Is it any surprise they need help adjusting? I, I guess that makes sense. Or at the very least, I really want to believe it. Music is a really powerful thing. It can calm the soul and make you feel better when you're down. It's also a great way to let out any bottled up feelings in a constructive manner. After all, there's a song for every possible emotion you could feel. You just pick the one that matches up with your own feelings and use it to let them out. That sounds like hippie talk. Part of me wants to say that to poke fun at the tiger just for the sake of embarrassing him a little, but that'd probably be cruel. Remember, Yuichi, no messing with people's beliefs. That's a no-no. At least you could use the piano to have a good time there, right? Yeah, it was the only thing that made it tolerable a lot of the time. I'm really glad I met all of you, especially you, Yuichi-san. I, I wasn't in a good place when I came back home, and, and it really helped. Oh no, I didn't know about that either. What was, what was wrong? It's hard to explain. There's a lot to unpack there, and I wouldn't even know where to start. At the very least, I used to feel really lonely for the longest time, and now I don't. And it's all thanks to you. My heart pounds hard inside my chest, ringing all the way into my ears. Just seeing June's face like that... It's enough to make my own face grow hot and red and to make my ears tingle. 
I'm glad to have been here for you. Yeah, I'm so thankful to you, Yuichi-san, for a lot more than you know. <laughs> I guess he and I have been sharing a wavelength on that without even noticing after all. What about our school? What do you think of it? We're gonna leave off here tonight. Never change, June. Never change. Never change, June. Never change. Anyways, stay safe, have a good night, and I will see you all tomorrow.